Okay, so let's go ahead and do our usual and, and uh, for the first time this year and help us to be able to unify uh, with one another through oming. Remember that oming is one of those things you want to do with your heart. You know, yes, we're doing it with our voice, but you definitely want to do it with your heart where you're feeling it, you know, deep inside of yourself. Because as you can feel it vibrate inside of yourself, those vibrations actually like move icky stuff out and away from us. It's sort of like, uh, you know, like debris coming off of a pan, you know, it, it leaves, it leaves vibrationally. It just kind of goes, <laughs> and then it helps us to unify in all of the good, uh, the good energy that's there. So <clears throat> very kindly, let us center ourselves. And let us do three ohms together. Remember that you can ohm anywhere. You can ohm uh, at your house. I think something's gone awry. <laughs> okay. You can ohm in your home. You can ohm in your car. You can ohm anywhere that you want to ohm that you feel like people won't think that you've gone mad, you know? <laughs> so you can ohm any place that you want just to be able to recenter yourself. And it does really actually work as a way to center ourselves. So um, what has been the word for this past month? Anybody know? Yes. Friendship. Friendship. Yes, friendship. Absolutely. So have you been experiencing some good friendship? Changes in friendship? New friends? Old friends? All of the above? Friendship all be of those above. Oh, good. Friendship's such a good word, you know, for many, many reasons. <clears throat> The yogis talk a lot about the word friendship, but, you know, we now, because uh, we're, you know, 21st century people, we have a whole new viewpoint of what the word friend means. It's kind of casual and not casual all at the same time, because, you know, we know we can friend people and with just a touch, we can unfriend somebody. So it's become a very different kind of use of the word friend. It used to be um, a different kind of way. I'm not saying, oh, the good old days. Now that I'm older, I wish we could be like the good old days. I'm, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> I'm just saying it's interesting for us to look at words and understand that words always reflect our thoughts, whether they're individual thoughts or they're group thoughts. So it's, I think it's always important to kind of look at a word and go, you know, that's a different word now we we use it in a, in a bit of a different way which means that we as a society has changed so remember that society is made up of individuals so that means individually we're changing i'm saying this to you so that you remember that we uh we learn things intuitively in groups because you know how it is it's like one person starts to get a, an idea about something and then they tell a few people and before you know it it goes all the way across the united states <laughs> And we don't even need a phone to make that happen, but it does make it even happen even quicker, quicker with devices. So that's important because we're always influencing one another with our thoughts, with a single word. So this word friend, it can be casual, it can be very, very casual. This is my friend. Oh, how long have you known each other? Well, we met on Facebook and we have never really actually met, but we're friends. And that does mean to that those people that is that word that means friend. So now it's the uh, friend has become kind of inclusive in a different way, which I think is kind of a nice word, you know, rather than, oh, this is my acquaintance, or this is somebody that I don't really know, but we have something in common is a long answer. <laughs> so this word friend can be a really good thing in uh, meeting people. It, it has a warmth to it, no matter what. So even though it's said more casually, it can be in a, in a very warm way. This is my friend. Notice how we make it possessive, my friend. <laughs> so friendship is a really good thing but it's very very important that friendship starts with yourself so the yogis talk about us having um, this interesting relationship with what they term god 
So God can be, we can use the word God, G-O-D, or you can use um, uh, some other word if you want. You can use goddess. I use goddess sometimes too. I love that word. <laughs> you know, being female and all, goddess is a good word. <laughs> so you can use God or goddess. You can use consciousness, love, whatever it is that you like to call it. But it is that place in which we live and move and have our being. That's what God is. We live within God. And we move within God, and we have our beingness within the beingness of God. These are things to ponder on, not to determine that we are right. This sacredness has to do with going deeper within these words and being able to feel them more than mechanically spewing out definitions. To define God, you would have to actually be completely self-realized. And if we're not, which I don't feel like any of us are actually, <laughs> then we're picking up pieces of it and we're sharing it with one another. And when we think of it more this way, we don't have anything to complain or to argue about with one another when it comes to God, because we all know that we're only going to pick up the piece of that word that we can identify with. And that piece of that piece of that word, God, that I identify with, this person over here is identifying with a different piece, but it's still the same. So language is different, right? We have French speakers, we have Spanish speakers, we have English speakers, but yet we're still saying the same thing in a different way. So same thing with this concept of God. We're all speaking a different language about God, but it's still about the same thing. So the yogis tell us to have two relationships with what we ter term the word God. The first relationship with God has to do with the awesomeness, the bigness of what spirituality really means. To even be able to consider for a moment that we are actually related to the galaxy, that we're related to the cosmos, that we're related to one another, that we're related to frogs, that we're related to baboons, whatever it may be. We are all related. And for this relationship, this cosmic kind of relationship to really make us go, what? And really feel it in this very deep kind of cosmic way. How amazing and how deep this relationship, this spiritual relationship really is. We give God form. Maybe God is a blonde blonde haired blue eyed male maybe it's a, a very dark haired dark skinned female does it matter no it's your representation because we cannot actually digest what god really looks like feels like is like we're all doing it in a different way because none of us have the exact same level of consciousness. Don't think of level as one stacked on top of another. Level in this sense, I mean, can be sideways. It could be up. It could be down. It could be anywhere. None of us can actually define God. But to remember that it moves through us, which means we are a part of that. So we too are part of the word God. What? So... This takes us to what they say that our relationship with God, the first one is to be in a place of awe where we're like, what? We're living in a, in a living universe? And to really like be amazed at how big this, this idea of God is to the point where it literally brings people to their knees when they're experiencing this word God. It's an awesome feeling. This is the word of, this is uh, the definition of devotion is when you can feel this magical feeling moving through you and you want to serve people. You want to help people. It comes through you in a way where you want to be nice. <laughs> you want to, as the car goes rush, racing by with their fingers going in different directions, it makes you want to go, it's all right. That's, that's feeling God in that moment whether no matter what you think God looks like, feels like, is like, in that moment, you are exhibiting those traits of God consciousness by being able to put love out into a dark moment. The 
person going by with the dancing fingers is in a moment of a dark moment. You're in a moment where you're encompassed in a very light moment. And that moment cannot be kept from the other person because you're thinking about them and you're thinking about them with light. So they will be affected by you thinking about God. If you think about God, if you are thinking in that moment, it's all right. They're just, they're, they don't, they don't know it all. They don't know any better in this moment. If you can put that kind of energy out when people's fingers are dancing at you, you are godlike. <laughs> in that moment, you are reflecting how we use this word God. So that would be considered a form of worship. That's what that is. Not of those people. Worship has to do with work. Your work was embodied with love, with divine love. Your work was to drive safely in that car when you're being distracted by somebody who wasn't driving so safely in their car, right? So our relationship with ourself is the first relationship that we really want to work on throughout the rest of our life, no matter what. When you work on the relationship with you, then you're working on the relationship that we call with God. And you're starting to see this thing that the yogis, the yogis spend a lot of time talking about, why do you feel so inadequate? What a waste. Why are you always saying that you're so weak and you can't do things and you're so little and you're so this? To them, it's like, what? <laughs> Don't you know who you are? So there's a very famous yoga story. Um, where uh, this um, uh, teacher, this uh, guru, him and his uh, student were staying at a, a, at a house and this family had um, fed the family and it was just a, a wonderful evening. And the, um, as they were going to uh, sleep that night, the guru said to the student, do you know how many people really believe in God? And the student said, Everyone? He said, no. The student was like, how could that be? Because the, this, the guru and the student had been traveling and they were in this home with these people who loved God. And it was true. These people were very much, we would call them God devotees. And they were so reverent and wonderful to this teacher. The student was baffled by, what do you mean? And he said, if there were gold in the other room, if you knew that there was a treasure of gold and you were a robber, would you be able to resist that gold? No, you would be thinking, 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 thinking all the time. I want that gold, I want that gold, I want that gold. And you would make sure that you got that gold. You'd steal that gold. You'd make sure you got it for yourself. Now, how many people go after God like that? How many people really want spirituality like that? Right? How many of us want it so much that we would put our heart and soul into transformation? <laughs> into making that our life where we really want it. We want to love deeply and profoundly. We want to be able to forgive and forget. We want to be able to move forward with strength, not with regrets and guilt and all kinds of things, pulling at our back, pulling us backwards, backwards, backwards. This concept of God is to help us to remember that we are divine beings. We are not little and nothing. So as we learn to, so to speak, crave for this feeling of living within God, it's, we have to have it as deeply and as passionately as the robber has it for a room full of gold. So we are ready, we have to be willing to stretch ourselves and to go deep. And as you're willing to stretch yourself, you start to have bigger adventures in life. You do. You start to want to express yourself differently. You have more confidence. So you start to meet different people. You have an, a new level of uh, creative uh, problems that, that need to be solved because you're feeling like you can do more than you could have done before because you have more awareness. You have more love 
for the divine that moves through you and moves through everybody that you know and everybody that you don't know, everybody that you like and everybody that you don't like. The divine flows through all of us. Yeah. So this word friendship, so the yogis say how this friendship with God where it's like, whoa, it can bring it to your knees is one friendship. Simultaneously, you want to be able to have a relationship with the divine, with, which is within yourself, where you are perfectly honest. Did you notice that I didn't say brutally honest? Because that's a term that we use. Oh, I'm going to be brutally honest. I don't think that that's necessary. Mm -mm. You can tell the truth without being brutal. It takes a little bit more effort takes a little bit more time. You have to like, let yourself be more intelligent. Intelligence needs just a moment to formulate itself. We can say the truth to someone, even though we know it's gonna hurt them. We can say it in an intelligent way to reduce that hurt, but we still stay in truth. That's being friendship with myself as much as I'm being friends with the other person. Because if I want to speak to another person the way I want to be spoken to. So that means also I have to practice speaking to myself in a way that's worthy of friendship. So then I can speak to others. Because if you're not talking to yourself that way, you're not going to have the practice. If you, you speak to yourself like you are just such a jerk. You know, that was so stupid. Yeah, you have no business being there. You're not good enough, right? If I practice that all the time, it's going to slip out and I'm going to say, oh yeah, Ruby, you're not good enough for that. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. It's going to start happening all around me because that's what I practice internally. So that's not practicing friendship. We have to practice friendship with ourself. This is where the divine actually lives, right here. And in you, and in everybody, and in bunny rabbits and grizzly bears and frogs and snakes and cockroaches too, of course. Mm -hmm. We're all related. It's important. We always forget when we talk about this, we're like, think of all the beautiful things. But of course, we don't think cockroaches are beautiful at all. In fact, we, you know, here's the face for it. <laughs> But they play a role and they're part of us. <laughs> they're on the planet. And just because, you know, we don't think that they're going to win any beauty contest doesn't mean they aren't filled with love and the divine force. So it's important for us to keep making ourselves better. You saw what happened in 2021. Where in the world was our friendship? Hmm? Let me see. Oh, it was the year that was minus friendship. What happened to our country, our beautiful country? What happened? Friend is now foe. <laughs> we are not united. We are very, very separated. We don't even care. There are people who are like, I don't care. They're just wrong. They're just bad. Don't want anything to do with them. And the division's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I have my left hand and my right hand, right? But they're connected to my torso, right? Because I'm like a tree, right, Ruby? <laughs> Talking to them. <laughs> I do talk to trees. <laughs> drives people crazy, right? It's just my mom. It just drives her mom mad. <laughs> anyway, I love trees and I love to think of my body somehow as like being like a tree, you know? It's like I've got these like little branches and big branches, and they're all connected here, right? So right now I'm using my body as a metaphor for our country. So right now we've got these branches that are very different from one another, but they're not really different from one another. It's just that this one is on the side that sees the sun coming up. And this is the side that gets to see the sunset. It doesn't make them different. It doesn't make one good and one bad. It makes their viewpoint very different. One sees it coming up, one sees it setting. They both see the sun. What they've forgotten, what people have forgotten, is friendship. We don't have to agree. Hello, we don't have to agree. <laughs> we do not have to agree. 
Mm-mm. Oh my God. What if we all agreed and we're all wrong? You know, come on. That is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we're like if we all agreed we'd all be right and it would all be perfect really what if we're wrong <laughs> we're all agreeing and nobody dares to disagree because we're all in love we all are agreeing with each other no we have to disagree that's the way to help each other because this person who's watching the sun come up has a different perspective than the person who's watching the sunset and they need each other to understand that the reason this is happening is because we're going around the sun. This is how you discover these things by disagreement and sharing those insights, sharing perspective with one another and putting it together so you have a bigger answer than what you had before. We have to disagree. We have to. We're not you know we do because we already do. It's how to disagree that's so important so that we're not betraying one another. Because remember the saboteur of friendship is betrayal. And the way to betrayal is to betray the self first. Betray the self, how could that be possible? Because other people betray us. They say one thing and then they do another thing. Hmm. You've never done that to yourself. <laughs> Told yourself you were going to do something and then didn't do it. <laughs> that never happened. Remember you New Year's resolutions? That never happened to you? <laughs> Only happened to me. <laughs> this year we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, come March, it's like, oh, hum. <laughs> and then it's January again. You're back to, okay, this year I got it, right? <laughs> so it's a type of betrayal. Betrayal comes in many, many degrees, still betrayal. We have still put it forth, this is what's happening, but it wasn't the truth. Just because we say it doesn't mean we can follow through with it. Why is that? Because of our past, because we all have habits of thinking. So we have these habits of wanting to change for the better, but we don't have, we haven't developed the strength within us to follow through. That's all. And that's something that we can do by practicing. Okay, so you got 365 days up here, right? <laughs> we, got, we got a whole year ahead of us. <laughs> so if you practice a little bit every day about helping yourself to be a better friend, speak more in I am. Remember, I ams are affirmations. I am, but I'm, I am tells you what you're thinking about yourself in the moment. I'm not very good today. I am not very good today. Okay, that's not a way to, to go through your whole day. It could even be worse. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm not going to have a good day today. It's not going to happen. No, mm -mm. I am really full of all this other stuff and I'm tired of what's going on out in the world and brrr, right. Okay. Acknowledge it for sure. But don't proclaim it as that's exactly what you're going to do. You don't want to put it out into your future. This is what you're going to do. You're going to have a really rotten day. I mean, that's what you're saying. I am in this space and I'm not getting out of it. Just try not to proclaim it. <laughs> It's better to say, yeah, I, I'm not feeling the way that I want to feel. It's true. I'm not. I'm not feeling the way I want to feel. I got to find my way. This is a very different way of looking at it than proclaiming that you can't do anything about it. And damn it, I'm going to be in a bad mood all day. And look out. Don't you get, don't get around me and expect me to be nice because it's not going to happen. Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Woo. And as you get older, you start to see how fast each of those days go and how important each one is. It's a lot of waste. In my life, sometimes I think, dang, there was a lot of minutes, tick tock, tick tock, that just went by with me griping. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be alone. <laughs> I'm not the only griper that's on the planet. <laughs> so I say that to you so you too at least have a little bit of a sense of humor with yourself about it so that you can lighten up and help yourself go, oh my God, are you just going to sit here and gripe all day or are you going to change a little bit? <laughs>
You know, sometimes you have to have a little bit of a, of a sense of humor with yourself. And speak up to yourself. Don't betray yourself and just let yourself lay around and think that, you know, it's really horrible and you can't do anything about it. We do have serious depression, so don't think I'm talking the same way to someone who's suffering like that than somebody that's just kind of, you know, off the mark. That's why I had to even tell you about betrayal. It comes in varying degrees. And we have to remember that everything that we talk about here does come in varying degrees. So I don't want anyone to feel like I'm um, speaking to them in a, a kind of a flippant way, because I'm not. I, I respect pain my own and yours and everybody else's, of course. This is a whole new year, on the calendar anyway. And uh, the sun, I think, says like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is my orbit. <laughs> but here we are, we're like, here we are going through this one more time. So how do you want to go around the sun this year? That's the kind of affirmations that you want to start thinking about, your resolutions. How do you want to be inside? What is it that you want to uplift? You know, what, what, what's inside of your mind that you want to be a little bit more light about? You know, what kind of habits do you have that just constantly makes you break promises to yourself? Maybe one of the things you might want to work on this year is being aware of the, the negativity that hits you like a hammer and keeps shattering all of your, your, your goals that you want to do for yourself. What is it that you want to do for yourself? I... I don't want to take away from that you want to improve your finances and you want to improve your home and you want to improve all of these different things. I just don't want to focus on those things so much because I really want to focus today on what kind of changes do you want to make within how you live within your mind? Because how you live within your mind is going to determine how you live no matter what comes your way in terms of your financial strength or any other kinds of things. How do you want to live within your mind? Do you want a bit more peace this year? Do you want a bit more joy? Do you want a bit more calmness? Consider the things that you really want to work on. We all know, okay, we're going to join the gym this year. Woohoo! We're going to be a vegetarian this year. Woohoo! No, they say plant-based, right? No. plant-based <laughs> we're going to be um we're going to be i don't know the best it team ever <laughs> we're going to do all kinds of things this year right okay lovely but do you have the equipment are you equipped inside for your adventures that you want to do outside are you equipped with your relationship with yourself? Are you self-supportive emotionally and mentally? Are you there for you? Meow, meow. There's a kitty. <laughs> there's a kitty. <laughs> oh, and there's her, there's her lovely side. <laughs> oh, they do love to show that side. <laughs> it is. So this year, are you equipped emotionally and psychologically to be the best that you can be this year. Where's your resolution about that? Let's work on peace this year, inner peace, being more friends with yourself, you know, being a little bit more light. I don't know where this thing started where people are like, no, you have to be mean to yourself. You have to get down on yourself or you'll never learn. I, I honestly don't know where that stuff came from, but it doesn't work. Mm -mm. It doesn't work. And if somehow or another there's a part of you that thinks it does, I'm going to encourage you to have a deep discussion with yourself and ask yourself, why in the world do you think that works? And where are your results? Where's your results that show that the more harsh you speak to yourself, you've become a better person? Where are those results? Where's those test results? I don't think you're going to find too many. When you're easy with yourself, uh, you're not getting away with anything. You don't have to treat yourself like you're a criminal. Oh, look, I got away with eating ice cream. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> you don't have to treat yourself like you're getting away with something or you're going you're gonna to do something bad or you are a bad person. You have a body and you live on the planet. This has nothing to do with deserving to be here. 
when we start thinking about, do I deserve to be here? Do I deserve to do better? Do, I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with anything. You have a body, you have a place on the planet. You're not a duplicate, you are an original. Yep, we're all human beings, but we all have our uniqueness to it, to us. So this has nothing to do with deserving. You need to like stop thinking about, do I deserve it? Do they deserve it? No, we all have karma that we have to adhere to. And karma is, is energy. It's our thoughts, words, and actions. And that's what we're talking about today. The better your inner life is with yourself, the more joyful you are out in your surroundings. And other people are joyful around you and they send it back to you. That's karma. That's cause and effect. That's the law of energy. Karma is a law of energy. It has nothing to do with this. You're going to be punished and, or you're going to be rewarded. That's this uh, kind of moralistic kind of thing that goes on. And then this person decides what's bad and what's, what's good. And this is what's going to happen to you. No. No. Yin and yang. You know the yin and yang symbol? This is everything that we go through when we talk here about our saints and saboteurs comes from the yin and yang. Who knew that that symbol was so incredible? We just see it as like, it's kind of cool, isn't it? You know? Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, it's the meaning of life. <laughs> so cool. So yes, the seed of the opposite is always inherent. So love never goes away. Love is always present. Love is always present in the most heinous criminal. <gasps> what? Yep. Hard to believe, hard to accept. But you can't have one without the other. The seed of the opposite is always inherent. So the seed of genius is always inherent in somebody who's doing something really ridiculous. The seed of genius is there. But how do we get to the good part of all of these opposing situations? Through concentration, through awareness. What do you concentrate on? And when you wake up in the morning, do you go, oh, another day? Oh my God, you live on a planet. And here we are waking up going, oh, another day. And then when it's time for us to die, we're like, oh, if I only had another day. Yeah, like what were you going to do with it? Moan about it? <laughs> you see my point? <laughs> we got to help ourselves instead of going, oh, another day. It's like, okay, all right, another day. Okay, let's, let's. Let's make some headway up this mountain. It's okay. Oh no, I'm going to have to help someone today. Really? You help your dog and your cat and your fish and your bird. You can help a human. Without thinking, why do I have to do everything? Mm, because you're strong, I guess. The stronger that we are, actually the more responsibility to do good we have. Inner strength isn't designed to be so that you're frivolous. If you have a lot of intelligence and you know how, how to uh, help people with their physical heart, it's a good idea for you to pursue that. Yeah, it's gonna bring in a lot of problems, a lot of responsibility, but it's probably a good idea for you to give your gifts away. Because if you don't, they'll rot inside of you. Did you hear what I said? It's so ugly. If you have a strength, give it away. And it'll multiply inside of you. Serve people with what you know how to do. Do you know how to drive well? Then do that. Do that every day. Don't give in to bad driving. If you are a really, really good driver, continue that. Whatever it is that you're strong enough to do, do it at your very, very best. Teach yourself to be strong and to be really, really glad that you're strong. So you never betray yourself by saying you're a weak person. Not a weak person. Swami Vivekananda said that he was tortured in his life by thinking he was a weak person because he was taught as a child, not necessarily through his parents, but the schools that he went to taught him to be a weak person. And he spent his whole life looking for those little little bits of little feelings of weakness in there to get them out. Because if you feel like you're a weak person, what can you do? 
then you have to wait for us to help you. You'll have to wait for us to help you. But you're not a weak person. When people die, are they weak? No, dying is the most incredible thing we're going to do. And you want to do it with strength, with dignity, as much as you can, fearlessness. And the only way we get to do that is if we're practicing fearlessness throughout our life. What are you really afraid of? What people are going to think of you? Well, you really think everyone's going to think good thoughts about you? Do you think about, do you have good thoughts about everybody that you know? Do you? Do you have good thoughts about every single person that you know? Of course not. So people will think bad thoughts about you as well as good thoughts. You do the same. Is that going to stop you from going deep into your intelligence and looking to see what you can do and help others because people are going to criticize you? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Mm -mm. No. Again, I have to use myself as an example. You know what I do. <laughs> You know what I do for a living. And you know that there are people who just don't think that that's necessary at all. <laughs> not only do they think it's not necessary, but they think it's evil, bad, scary. That's me, the scary lady. Woo! <laughs> You're not afraid of me because you know me, but there are people who could be afraid of me if, if they knew what I do, right? So because I'm aware of that, I do not agitate it. Mm -mm. No, no, I don't incite it. I don't uh, say things that would be oppositional. I make sure I walk around individuals. If I know that they're going to have a problem with me, I make sure I am silent. And you might be like, well, why should you have to? Because I know it's the best route for me. I know that if I, if I start to fight every battle that's in front of me, that's all I'm going to do. I don't have time for that. I choose not to have time for that. I know that they have bad opinions about me. I know what they're thinking is really horrid. I know that. And I live with me. I know they're wrong. So who am I going to listen to? Them or me? Who knows me better? Oh, easy answer, me. I'm going to listen to me. And I'm going to make it so that I'm not going to get stuck in an argument day after day after day. I'm not going to be op oppositional. I'm not going to put myself up there to be, have to like stand up and s about everything that I do. No, I'm not going to be defensive about it. That's my choice. My choice is to live more freely. I walk around them. I do I walk around them and then that by the time they do know what I do they're going to be like well she doesn't seem evil does she <laughs> now I'm more of a enigma <laughs> so you have to choose how you move through the world you have to decide how to treat yourself because you know there are going to be people who don't understand you you know there are going to be people who are going to say things about you that could be like, you know, not so nice, could take your energy away from you in some way. So you have to learn to be there with you. There, do you really have time to fight everybody who has an oppositional thought to you? I hope not. I hope you don't have a whole lot of energy for that. Be the good. Be the way inside of you that you know that you are. Right? Right? Sometimes the best thing to do with people who are oppositional is to not, I'm trying to think of the best word. The best thing to do is to be disinterested. The more interested you get in their opposition, the more oppositional you will become. But when you're not interested, I honestly am not interested in sticking up for myself every single day. 
right? I mean, I, I could put myself into a situation like that <laughs> and say, oh yeah, this is what I do every day. Brrr. And I'd have to like deal with explaining it. I, no, thank you. I'd rather have other conversations. I'd rather live my life than every single day being oppositional. So I'm saying to you, be who you are. Be who you are, because there's going to be people who are going to be oppositional to you, a little or a lot. Depends on what's going on in your life and if it's in vogue or not, you know? So you got to know that that's going to happen don't betray yourself. Don't betray yourself and putting yourself in the middle of everything all the time, because then you're not going to have a spare moment for yourself. And then you're going to have to process all the words that were said to you. And they're going to stay with you for days and days and days. And you're going to be like, I can't believe they said that to me. Oh my God. Right. You don't want to go through all that. <laughs> it's best that you go, oh my God, if I would have interacted with those people today, I'd still be thinking about it. Thank God treated myself to distance. I treated myself to distance instead of going head on. There's a time for going head on, don't get me wrong, but it's not an everyday thing. Mm -mm. Don't betray yourself. This is the divine. This is where the divine lives. We are part of that. We are. We are. We're as a uh, we're as much a part of the divine as a wave is to the ocean, right? So you see the wave and you're like, oh, it's a beautiful wave. Well, it's the ocean now, isn't it? No, it's a wave that's in the ocean. No, it's, it's the ocean. No. You say we can go back and forth. No, it's a wave. It's the ocean. No, whoop, whoop, whoop. back and forth. Okay, so if I go and I scoop water out of the ocean and I have it here in a little cup and I tell you, look, here's the ocean. And you're like, Oh, yeah, there she is being nice again, but a little weird. I say, no, it really is the ocean. I say, come on, come on. So we walk to the ocean together and I fling it into the ocean. I say, see, it's the ocean. We are divine. So when I say, that this is where the divine lives. Yeah. I am a wave in the ocean. I am the ocean. I am God in that sense. I am a wave in the ocean. I am no different. I have a job to be a wave and I'm born and I live and then I die and then I'm born, I live, and I die, and I am part of the ocean. Yeah, I'm part of it. And not only am I part of it, but I'm aware that I'm a part of it. That's the big difference, is being aware that you're part of it. Then you don't think of yourself as weak. You know you're part of it. And then it becomes more magical, like, what can I do rather than, oh, I can't do that. No, people will talk. Yes, they will talk. <laughs> and you can sit at home and close the door and they'll still talk. <laughs> but is that a reason for you to not to be who you are? After all, consider this. There are a lot of souls that would like to be born on this planet right now who'd like to have a body and they can't get one but you got one. Don't spend it just spinning. Help yourself to grow, to get settled, to be courageous, to do things that you didn't even think you could do. And remember that the main thing that's usually stopping most of us is, but what will people say? <laughs> Whatever they want. <laughs> the real question is, what will you do when they talk about you? What will you do when they don't speak well of you? What will you do? Will you just spend all your time fighting them? Or will you become disinterested and live your life anyway? Disinterestedness is a power all its own. When we become disinterested, then those negative thoughts cannot get in there. Doesn't mean we ignore them because it's not the same word as denial. 
It's a completely different word. Denial is not disinterestedness. Denial is you're purposely going, no, 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 no. Disinterestedness is, oh my God. And you move forward. And then when you're far enough away, you pray for them. But you don't let yourself be affected by that negativity. Help yourself get away and then pray for those who can't seem to get away. Pray for their peace. Remember, my favorite prayer is Lord Ganesha, or you don't have to do that, but kindly remove the obstacles to peace, peace, peace. Anytime you see people on the side of the road, they're having a hard time, wherever you are, just in your mind, look at them, look straight at them and say, kindly remove the obstacles to their peace, 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 and walk away. Could you imagine if we had 100 million people on one day praying that the obstacles to peace, peace, peace be removed? even just in their minds. We are vibration. We are vibration. Don't let yourself get caught up in the vibrations of the everyday. I can't do this and you can't do this and nobody's going to be able to do this. Don't let all those vibrations that are out there in the world get into your mind and steal your precious moments of your life. We don't want to betray ourselves. Be a really, really good friend to yourself this year. Help yourself to go, oh, yeah, there's some bad thoughts going on in my mind right now. I need to extricate them <laughs> and get on it. You know, don't go, oh, yeah, I have bad thoughts because, oh, I must be bad. I, if I would have been practicing, I wouldn't have. Oh, no, you don't have time for that. Do something about it. Don't moan and groan that you're a bad person on top of that. Now you have bad thoughts and now you understand that you're a bad person. You don't understand that at all. You're a good person. Everybody who's, who's sitting here with us today is a seeker of what? Of love, of peace. And it takes a tremendous amount of inner strength to be able to achieve these things. So when people make fun of us, oh, you people, <laughs> you're still doing that love and light thing? Oh, yeah, I'm still doing the love and light thing. <laughs> every day I'm still doing it I'm still doing it I'm still doing it and I'm still happy <laughs> I'm still happy doesn't mean bad things don't happen in my life but I'm still happy because I know that it's up to me to practice and I'm, I, anybody who wants to say, well, you shouldn't be happy because there's bad stuff going on in the world and I feel guilty being happy. No, because I know that when I feel bad, when I have a bad thing that's happening in my, my life, I don't say to myself, I can't believe other people are celebrating birthdays. I have grief. Come on. You know, when you have grief, you want other people to not have it. You want other people to celebrate. You want them to do well. You want them to be happy. Mm -hmm. You know that to be true. And you got to make a bigger deal out of it. You know, when, when you feel really, really bad, instead of blaming everybody, you just got to go, mm -mm. no, this is my territory. This one belongs to me. I can fix this. I can grow through this. Don't put your eyes on to, well, it's because of this person over here. It was because of what somebody said to me when I was five. And then they said it again to me when I was 15. Oh, who gives a crap? I'm sure you've said something to people when they were four and they were 14, right? Let it go for God's sake. <laughs> see it as the habit that it is and don't feed it, become disinterested. You see what I'm talking about with disinterestedness? Become disinterested in the things that pull you into hell. Because when you're not interested in those negative thoughts, you don't go to them. But when you're really interested in them because they tell you how bad you really are, you're just going to go into it and go, yeah, I am bad, right? You don't want to go there. Become disinterested. 
and these really um, raw, negative, judgmental thoughts about yourself. Become disinterested in them. They're not true. You're a human being. They're not true. You're not rotten and bad. You're a human being. And we have come here to be calm, enlightened, right? Which means we're constantly trying to get the darkness off of us so that we can shine, shine. That's why, that's why we're here, is to learn to shine, shine. Love shines. It, it moves forward. If you want to know what love looks like, look at the sun. That's what love looks like. It gives. And wherever it, it, it is, there's light and it comes and it's warmth and it gives life and it gives hope and it gives more love and we're saturated in it. So we're becoming little suns. That's what's happening to us. We're becoming little suns, but sometimes you can't tell because we're little dark clouds. <laughs> so you have to take care of yourself and learn to shine. Take care of yourself, scrub inside. Really take care of yourself. When you start to find yourself going down into doom and gloom, mm -mm, save yourself. Know it's your responsibility. Be kind to yourself. Pull yourself out of the swamp. Get out of the alligator's mouth. It's not your home. You can do it. Being better friends to yourself will make you better friends with the people around you. It'll make you, it'll make you be able to accept that we're not supposed to all agree with one another. We're supposed to love one another, not agree. It's not the same thing. Of course we disagree. But do you love one another? Do we love one another? Do the people that disagree with you, do you wish bad on them? I hope not. And if you do, now's the time to go, oh, I kind of do. Okay, then don't. <laughs> Once you become aware of it, help yourself. Don't go, oh, yeah, see how bad I am. I've been doing it the wrong way. Ah, 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 ah. No. Now we have more hurt and pain. It's best to acknowledge it and go, oh, hell, I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay, now I know. Let me clean myself up. Clean myself out. Let me, let me do that now, right? Every day, clean yourself up from the inside out. Where's those negative thoughts? You got to chase them away. Because if you don't, you're going to start thinking about a particular few people. And you're going to decide that they're the reason that you feel the way that you do. And you're going to think about them every day and you're going to make them into this really bad, bad beings. And they may not have the power to, that you think that they have over you. They might not even think about you. Where's that bad stuff coming from? From you to you. I'm encouraging you to stop thinking about people that you think are hurting you. Because they are really living a good life inside of your head. Mm -mm. send them love send them peace don't don't tell me no <laughs> send them love send them peace if you can do that you can do anything because you'll still feel good about you and you don't need them anymore to tell you how bad you are you don't need that you don't need help you can do it all on your own. You don't need their help. <laughs> but you do need to help you to stop doing it to you. <laughs> you need to be better with yourself. It's not the end of the world because somebody thinks that you're a, I don't know. I don't like to say those words, you know. <laughs> it's not the end of the world that somebody thinks that you're a crazy person. To me, it's more like I see... You don't know anything about me. That's all right. I don't have time to laugh at other people. It doesn't make me happy. Laughter, I save that for when I really feel 
joyful. And it doesn't make me joyful to laugh at anyone. So if someone's laughing at me, that breaks my heart. Not for me. For them. Wow. You would laugh at me? You would laugh at my loved one? You would laugh at this woman that you don't even know? Wow. Wow. They need some love. That's suffering. When people get to that point, they need our love, not our disdain. You want to make the world a better place? You say you're spiritual, do you? Do you tell people you're spiritual? Do you tell people you like to be spiritual? Then, okay, let's do it. Let's get busy this year. Let's start sending peace and love out to all those people that are so filled with their faces like this, pinched with the anger and the heat and the this and oh come on send them peace send them love do don't become them don't fight with them be the answer or like gandhi would say be the change that you want to see in the world right that's what we've been talking about okay so no betrayal right no betrayal no one's going to betray themselves this year right <laughs> we're going to work on it Okay, we're going to work on being friends with ourselves. We're going to work on being friends with one another, which means we don't have to agree. We just have to behave properly. <laughs> we don't have to agree. So in case you're wondering what the word is going to be um, for the uh, month of January. Okay, guess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it starts with an E. <laughs> How many E words do you know that we that we focus on? What do we focus on? Oh, empathy is an E word, but that you that's not it. Do you got another E word? Equanimity. Equanimity, another E. No, but that's a perfect word. <laughs> Energy. Energy, another perfect word. Oh, there, there's a lot more E words than I realized. Embodiment. Oh, embodiment. Yes. Empower. Whoever just said that one. Empowerment for January. Yes, empowerment. So of course, what would be the saboteur of empowerment, but powerlessness, powerlessness. Because we are love, we're, we always have empowerment available to us. It's okay if somebody doesn't see it in you. You just got to be at peace that other people don't see it in, in, in you. It's all right. Right? Empowerment. Empowerment will make you soft and kind. Notice I didn't say wimpy. Mm -mm. Love is never wimpy. It is soft. And it is like trees, right? Trees have the ability to bend in the wind. And at the end of, of the day, they still stay up. But if they don't have this, they will crack and they will drop to the ground. So don't get hard. The negative emotions that we have make us hard, it's stiff. Anger is like, you don't see people that are feeling like this when they're angry. They're not, yeah, I'm really upset. I'm really, really upset. I am so upset. No, you don't see that. <clears throat> the body must reflect the mind. So be empowered this month. So your body's empowered too. Think empowered thoughts, say empowered words. Be empowerment in your body. Be flexible, be tolerant, be loving. Be like trees. We'll be like a little forest of trees. <laughs> Sending out peace out into the world. <laughs> True, it's true. You have to be childlike in order to move forward. So we always like to do um, a time where uh, we'll do three alms here together to finish this part. And then if you want to stay for a few moments and ask questions, be happy to do that, okay? I may not have answers for you, but we'll talk about your questions. <laughs> okay, so let's alm together.
Thank you for being with us today. Peace be with you. Namaste. Anybody have a question? Comments, Comments concerns? <laughs> No. from me just oh. want to say happy new year and thank you oh thank you so much miss candace happy I new year everyone happy new happy year new happy new year <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah oh go ahead mara oh okay uh just uh quick the two the yogis say two relationships with god the awesome awesomeness of god number one and number two the relationship Friendship. Uh, yes. uh, friendship with ourselves and God personally. Yeah. So it's like your everyday friendship. It's like, this is who you want to talk to, right? You want to talk to the divine one because it's consciousness. We're like, aren't I just talking to myself? Yeah, but it's the, the big part of yourself, the part that we call God. So you want to have a friendship with the divine within yourself so that, you know, that it's easy to talk with. Um, like wherever you go, like if, like if I'm out like doing something by myself, I do talk to the divine and to yourself and to myself. <laughs> Thank you, <Ruby. laughs> it's true, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is true. You live alone, you you. And of course, yeah, if you live on your own, you, you definitely, who are you going to talk to? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and my best friend, my best friend is the divine. So some, on some days, uh, I picture the divine as like my cosmic grandmother. You know, it's those days that I really, you know, I'm just kind of in need of understanding, you know, so I think of the divine as my cosmic grandmother. Sometimes I think of the divine as my finder of lost things, because I have this tendency to want to find lost things. <laughs> you got air tags for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> always trying to help me with these things and so sometimes the divine is a male sometimes the divine is a female it doesn't really matter to me but it's always always a, a relationship that I cherish that I speak to that I converse with when I go shopping I'm, all, I'm like okay please help me to shop and then we go in there and I'll find bargains that I would not have necessarily found before but you know once you sit this intention that you know this is going to be more of a spiritual experience not just this worldly I gotta get it done I can't live like that anymore. This question is one more time, please. How to distinguish disinterestedness? Oh, one more time, please. How to distinguish disinterestedness from denial and keeping negative thoughts away. Okay, so denial is denial is a weird thing in that it requires awareness. <laughs> so you know, denial is one of those things where you're like, no 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 really it's it's working out well it, it it is yeah yeah it's working out well are you convinced that it's working out well for me no that's what denial looks like you know it's not working out well but you want the other people to see a particular thing disinterestedness is different disinterestedness is that i'm disinterested in figuring out why i'm feeling that way where is it coming from what i'm starting to do is i'm starting to understand that it's there it's there this bad thought i have about myself is there okay it's there no denial it's there but i'm not going to be like now why am i doing that why am i doing that oh my god i did it again oh i'm so stupid you see that is not disinterestedness. It's not disinterestedness. Disinterestedness is if I see a whole bunch of people fighting each other, am I going to jump in there? No, I'm 67. Chances of me jumping into a street fight are slim to none. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm going to be disinterested in the actual fighting. But I will probably find my way walking to my car. And as I'm doing that, I will pray for them. And when I'm in my car, I will pray for them, but I will not get involved with the fight. So in that sense, I'm disinterested. So politically, I there's so many different things and people shout at me during the day, you know, different things <laughs> on all these different sides of political issues. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm pretty disinterested. Does that mean I don't care? Does that mean I'm apathetic? No, we have a word for apathetic. It's apathetic. It is not disinterested. 
we have a word for denial. It's denial. It's not disinterested. Disinterested is when you remove the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the passion, the power. Yes. You, remo you remove that, that sting, that zing that that energy has with it. You remove that and you teach yourself to look at it like it's separate from you. You know, it's like sometimes those, um, those shows that are so scary and, uh, on TV, whether it's about um, history or it's about a scary place or it's about a really bad situation where people got really hurt. You, you know how it can draw you in? Disinterestedness is when you're like, I think it's best that I, I see this from afar. You're seeing it from afar. So people who are really deeply spiritual, they don't get interested in all of these um, big fights and things that go on in the world mm -mm, because they don't want to become oppositional. So they're, in, they're disinterested in the extreme passion. When you become disinterested in that, but you become very, very interested in spirituality, then you embody the answer that you want to see in others. You want to see this answer in other people. What really gets us upset? How come they're not acting nice? How come they're not doing this? Look at my head. <laughs> Who do I have control over? Well, certainly not me. <laughs> Once I start to realize I need to be disinterested in how they're living and I pay attention to, I just got sucked into the madness. And if I can take care of me, and not get sucked into the madness, I'm doing something. But if I get sucked into the madness, all I'm doing is becoming part of the madness. And now we have this big, now everybody's mad at each other. And people say, well, that's what you do when you care. No, it's not what I do when I care. Mm -hmm. Does that so make sense? It's so good. <laughs> Disinterestedness is an interesting thing, right? it's a practice it's a practice but that's what we have to do in severe situations we have to learn. <clears throat> it's oh, help us right oh go ahead uh, cultivating that is empowerment precisely yeah so. yes thank you for saying that that's okay. exactly where we're going this month you're just ahead of the game there girl okay. <laughs> yeah. she work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of homework to do. And so, yeah, empowerment, when we can cultivate disinterestedness, it can be very, very empowering. Because, you know, now you can actually like speak to yourself with all of that, without all of that passionate oppositional thinking, you know, who's right and who's wrong and who's this and who should be punished and, blah, you know, as that goes away, then you start to see, wow, how did those people start to think like that? Where did that come from? And you start to become more interested in like, what happened there? How did they forget to love? Oh my goodness, what happened? And then when we start to become interested in what happened, then we can also, it, it benefits us because we could see how it could happen to us or to anyone that we love. Mm -hmm. So disinterestedness has this empowerment, this strength to it that gets us, gives us space to change. We've just, uh, we've just all become a little addicted to anger, you know, thinking that that means we care. <clears throat> it means you're angry. <laughs> That's what it means. It doesn't have anything to do with, look how caring and wonderful I am. It has to do with in that moment, oh, I don't have self-control. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's important for us. You know, we even see it like in our country, the more angry you get, the more you care. No, the angrier you get, the more angry you get. It doesn't have to do with love. It doesn't have to do with peace. Anger is one of those things that every single person can do quite well. <clears throat> Any of us can become um, sick with anger. It can, it can make our, our brains too hot. It can, it just doesn't have a lot of goodness in it. And we all have moments of anger. There isn't anybody who doesn't. But it's about helping ourselves not to live in that space. And when you see people who are living in that space, you have to be a little disinterested in them because if you approach them with anger, there's going to be a spark flies and someone's going to get hurt. 
So disinterestedness will keep you away from that where you can actually put really good energy into the world. And God knows we need it. We need every single person to really focus on doing good, sending out a, a prayer of peace or a prayer of light every day. This is our home. Just because we live here in California doesn't mean Mississippi isn't our home or, or Belgium or Ecuador. It's still the planet. It's still our home. <laughs> Yeah, disinterestedness. It's just a word that we're not used to hearing. It's a word that's in the uh, Vedanta uh, or the way of the yogis. Vedanta is the, the path. Um, and disinterestedness is a very, very high, high quality that we have to cultivate. So that's why when you see masters, you're not seeing them um, being really interested in talking to the individuals. Uh, they talk more to the masses, you know, because they know how to uh, talk to us as individuals in a really, really big group because they know what we all have in common. <laughs> We're still learning what we all have in common. So we have a really big year, 2022. We have a year where we have some very interesting astrological things that are going on. And as the year unfolds, we'll talk a little bit about that. But we do have some pretty big things that, that um, are out in the atmosphere this year so we really have to practice centeredness more than than we normally do we do we have to really really practice being centered and don't let the world come in and you know um make you think bad thoughts about one another don't don't let that happen mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah. you say just say no <laughs> anybody else have another question that you want to ask Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Well, I just go. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, one quick one, um, Jackie. You often share with us that you have a personal theme for the year. Sometimes you share. Do you have that for so you? the one that we're doing this year? It actually has to do with energy. So we're going to start doing classes in March on spirituality. Um, but they're still in the making, right, Ruby? Yeah. We still got the making. Uh, doing them but we're going to focus a lot this year on karma really a lot on karma because classes yes we're going to do classes outside of solstices is that what yeah. said? yes we're going to do our solstice and equinox um, uh, celebrations but we're also going to be doing um, uh, classes like um, how are we doing throughout the year about more workshop type things yeah more workshop kinds of things so hopefully like once a month is how we're going to do this. So we'll see. But I do want you to like start thinking about karma. What does karma really mean? Because we're going to talk about the the way that it's actually taught, the way karma is actually taught, not this way where we banter around. Yo, you get yours. <laughs> not that U.S. version of karma, <laughs> but really more uh, the traditional way that it's taught. You know, um, and um, so that we can have a better idea of uh, that 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 our past is always with us, you know? We don't think that it is. We think we're completely disconnected or somehow or another when you die, it's all over. I don't know what people think sometimes. It's like karma never ends. It, it is, it's always happening. It's very similar to, let me see, do I have a, um, let me see. So, you know, remember, just remember this, that for this year, remember that what we're gonna be learning this year is, is that we're all seeds. And inside of the seed is DNA. And DNA is proof that we've lived before. If you're a seed, you've lived before. And the proof is in the DNA, right? Tell me if you don't get that. Right? You have DNA? Who doesn't have DNA? Does everybody have DNA? Everybody has DNA? Okay, good. Okay. So this is proof that this body came from something. It lived before. Its essence lived before. But you're not that body. But it's your vehicle. So your mind, your essence actually matches your body. But this is really hard because we live in a culture that says, well, so does that mean that the most beautiful bodies are the most advanced? Not necessarily <laughs> at all. <laughs> will the classes be online or interesting? Then the classes will be online. And we're going to talk a lot about what karma actually is. 
And each month when we do the same words, we're still doing the same thing, having our word for the month, but we're going to actually put uh, another lesson that has to do with karma with it. We're also going to be doing tarot classes this year. So we're going to do that again. That's a long class. Let me tell you. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> I know, I, I know it's really popular now and people are like, you know, tarot and 10 easy steps, but I'm just like, what? <laughs> I've spent my whole life doing it. 10 easy steps. <laughs> well, I'm better teachers than I am. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's a, it's for me, tarot is a very, it's a, it, the way that I was taught is, is that it takes lifetimes to master. And uh, so I've been doing it for 50 years, professionally 40 years. And I'm telling you right now, oh my God, if I had another 40 years to learn about it, really just sit and learn about it, I'd love that. Because learning tarot is learning about yourself. <laughs> and when you learn about yourself, you learn about others and you see what we have in common and how we're just... Um, we are interconnected but we're we're all the same but not at the same time does that make sense you know like it's, it's hard yeah yeah we all have this interesting originality about us and and we're all at different different stages and places in our lives so tarot is very revealing and, and helps us to understand these journeys that we're on so anyway we're going to implement that a little bit more um this year so I'm very, very happy um, about this upcoming year. And um, we have a lot of uh, overcoming and we have the power to overcome because we are empowered. <laughs> so it is the power to overcome. And um, so this, this year, please focus on your ability to overcome. All right. And I, I uh, look forward to studying with you this year. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Be with you. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> so sweet.